and welcome back to Ag Enterprise Management. I am your instructor for the course, Matthew Johnson. If you haven't done so already, please go check out the course website and the syllabus. This week's module, we're going to be talking about farm employees, human resources, how to get some help. So during this module, we're going to go over the basics of what you need to know when adding employees to your ag business enterprise. Learning objectives are going to be learning about how to hire fire employees. We're also going to do a brief overview of employee labor laws. We'll also talk a little bit about uh, farm worker housing and woofing uh, as an alternative for bringing uh, labor onto the farm. And we'll also identify some additional resources to help with human resources. All right, so labor laws, uh, why are they important? So when you're starting up a business and at first it may just be you and maybe your partner, um, if you have a business partner, but when you start bringing on outside labor um, to help with your business, uh, it can be a very good thing, but also it can be come with it some, some challenges. So you need to be aware of uh, the laws so that you make sure that you don't get in trouble all right, so this is to protect you and your business from possible legal action and regulatory fines. Uh, and as always, uh, with that, there comes additional government taxes that need to be paid. Um, so there is a combination of taxes that need to be withheld from the amount of pay that you're providing your employees. That is part of your responsibility as a business owner. And then there are also additional um, taxes with you as the employer that you have to pay as well. Also need to make sure that employees are being treated fairly. So this includes minimum wages, uh, also benefits, also need to make, make sure that there's not uh, a work site discrimination, and you also need to keep your employees safe. And you also need to increase your access to programs that require compliance with labor laws. All right, so the first thing, so you're at a point where you're like, okay, yep, yeah, um, let's bring on the help. Uh, I've got some money that we can afford to bring on some, uh, some employees. So if anyone has had a job before, um, this form should look familiar. This is an I-9 form. This is a federal document. So it's your responsibility as an employer to make sure that you are that the employees that you are hiring are legal uh, to be working in the United States. Um, so especially around agriculture, uh, historically there's been a lot of abuse of this of bringing in uh, illegal immigrants, especially uh, on the mainland in California, but also here in Hawaii, uh, a variety of different uh, illegal immigration. Um, issues have happened throughout the past so this is one of the first steps when you're bringing on an employee is verifying their uh, legality for them to be working in the country uh, and there's also another program specifically for non uh, u.s citizens so these are going to be uh, employees that that typically are not legal to be working in the country, but there's a, a program called an H-2A visa program that would actually allow you to bring in um, uh, aliens or um, people from outside the country to come in and work uh, with your farm on a temporary basis. All right, so wages. Um, wages is always one of the, the first things that people talk about. It's like, hey, I want you to come work for me. So one of the first questions is going to be, well, how much are you going to pay me? So there are a minimum amount of money per hour that you are required to pay your employees. So uh, as of uh, 2019, the minimum wage for the state of Hawaii is $10.10. So you cannot be paying any employees for any kind of work less than that. Uh, this is going to vary from state to state. Uh, could even vary from city to city. Um, we're seeing a lot of conversations around the country about increasing the minimum wage at a federal level 
um, to $15 per hour. And this is always going to um, be a topic of discussion. And uh, as an employer, uh, you would probably be arguing for potentially lower wages. But obviously, as an employee, you're going to be arguing for higher wages. So this is going to be a, a continuing conversation um, to determine what is the appropriate amount of money to be paying labor. Uh, there's also the, the frequency of when you pay your employees is very important. Um, so you must pay employees at least twice monthly and within seven days after the end of each pay period. So typically the schedule is either every two weeks uh, or uh, twice a month um, for the payroll. And so if your schedule, once you determine the schedule, you have to communicate this to your employees. And then if your um, pay schedule, uh, your payroll period, if it ends on a Friday, you need to ensure that your employees are receiving money for that pay period by the following Friday. Okay, so you can't just uh, have an employee work and say, oh yeah, yeah, we'll uh, get you paid uh, within, within a month or within two months. You have to make sure that you are paying them on a timely basis within at least one week. Also too, when you provide uh, an employee with uh, their paycheck, you need to make sure that you're including all the information because in the next slide we're going to be talking about is there's certain withholdings that you have to do as an employer um, from an employee's wages. So it makes sense that if you're going to be paying an employee $10.10 .10, uh, an hour, they're not actually going to see that entire $10.10. .10. Because there's going to be withholdings that um, are going to be taken out that include taxes and insurances and Medicare. Um, so the employee uh, may only see anywhere from seven to eight dollars an hour of actual cash that's in their paycheck. So any money that you are withholding, you have to include a pay statement that explains the, what money was withheld and and where that money went. You also have to be um, cognizant of the amount of hours that your employees are working. So if the employee is working more than 40 hours per week, uh, you are required to pay overtime. And there are exceptions to this, but for our purposes here, um, we're talking about employees that are um, non-exempt employees, which basically means that they're hourly employees, and so if they're going to be working more than 40 hours a week, you need to pay them one and a half times their regular rate. So this is something you need to really pay attention to. Um, as you can imagine, this could really affect uh, a business's budget um, if you do not have enough employees and, and you're starting to grind the, the current employees that you have. So you can... Um, ask them to work more than 40 hours a week, but you will be required to pay one and a half times the regular pay. Okay, so we kind of already mentioned, um, you know, as an employer, um, if you're gonna be paying employees, there's certain other taxes and withholdings and insurances that you have to pay. So over here, we have a diagram that explains some of the different things uh, some of the items that either the employer has to pay, both the employer and the employee have to pay, or just the employee has to pay. Okay, so uh, for the employer, there's some additional expenses that you have to pay. So there is a, a federal unemployment tax. This is known as FUTA. Uh, so this is additional tax that you as the employer have to pay. And this is uh, a federal unemployment program that provides money for employees who have lost their jobs. So if any of you have ever uh, lost a job for no uh, fault of your own, you're able to apply for a uh, unemployment uh, checks. So you're able to receive money while you're looking for other work. And this is uh, part of how 
this program is funded by employers paying a certain tax for uh, to go into the unemployment uh, pool of money. Uh, then we also have the state version of this. So we have the state unemployment insurance. So this is an additional amount of money that employers have to pay to uh, provide funding for people within the state to be able to apply for uh, unemployment payment checks. Uh, there also may be employer contributions. Okay, so if you have a program within the company uh, where you are doing a match for your um, employees, maybe like a 401k plan or a pension plan, then this is going to be additional amount of money an employer is going to have to pay. Um, also, uh, health benefits. So in the state of Hawaii, uh, employers must provide health care coverage to employees who work at least 20 hours per week. Right, so this is a requirement and also um, something to be thinking about as an employer. So if you're going to bring on an employee who's only working 10 hours a week, you don't have to think about it. But if that employee starts working more than 20 hours per week and this happens um three consecutive uh, weeks in a row, you're now required to offer that employee um, health health plan coverage. And this can range anywhere from typically two, four hundred to even five hundred dollars a month. So this is not exactly uh, a bank breaking uh, expense, but additional expense that you may need to consider and provide for your employees. So both the employee and the employer are also required to pay into Medicare. Right? So this is a national health insurance program. So this is funding available for people who are unable to uh, pay for their own uh, health insurance. And then also contributing to Social Security. So this is a social welfare program that is managed by the US government that pays benefits to retirees, workers who have become disabled and survivors of deceased workers. So if anyone has uh, had a job and uh, you've been um, paying uh, into a social security program, you may have received uh, an annual letter uh, from the social security administration letting you know the amount of money that you've contributed. So basically this is a program so that when you uh, reach the age of 65, um, you are then able to receive Social Security payments as part of your retirement plan um, as for being a U.S. citizen. So this is basically a forced retirement plan imposed by your government. Uh, hopefully, there will be enough money uh, in this program by the time all of you are looking to retire, but that's a whole nother conversation. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the employment laws. All right, so another part of, so we already spoke about making sure that we're paying the right amount of taxes and withholding a certain amount of uh, money from our employees and then paying them to the uh, either state or federal government. So once again, we spoke before about the general excise tax. Um, part of our role as being business owners, employees, is that we are tax collectors for the government. So we already spoke about that, but now we also need to make sure that we are treating our employees appropriately and that we're not putting ourselves uh, in a situation that could uh, either lead to litigation or fines or uh, endanger any of our employees. So the Family and Medical Leave Act, right, so supplies for businesses that have 100 or more employees for state law applies to 50 or more employees. So basically it provides employees unpaid leave for serious health conditions or care for a sick family member or a new child. So this is something to consider if you have uh, employees who become seriously ill um, and then also are having a child. So this is something we need to be careful with and take into consideration. The, uh, you know, employees, we want to make sure that they're being taken care of, and these acts um, 
ensure that we are doing that. We also have workers' compensation. Right? So this applies to any employer having one or more workers. So basically this provides employees with medical care and partial wage loss replacement for work-related injury illness. All right, so this is specific to an uh, employee who gets hurt or sick on the job. So once again, this is something to be very careful about and to ensure that, uh, one, you have a safe workplace, safe, healthy workplace for your employees. But then if something does happen, um, having the appropriate funds available to be able to uh, compensate for employees who are hurt or sick on the job. And we also have employment and discrimination laws. So this means that there's there's certain reasons of why you can decide not to hire an employee or let go, fire an employee. But then there are very specific reasons of why uh, you cannot discriminate. And this includes uh, basis of sex, race, ancestry, national origin, religion, uh, color of their skin. Uh, disability, age, marital status, and sexual orientation. So this is very important and something to be very careful with. Um, we hear reports about this all the time of uh, if an employee feels like they are being discriminated against and then they can file a lawsuit against uh, either individuals or the business. And this can become a very sticky situation, especially for small businesses. And it also applies to um, anti-sexual harassment, um, pregnancy discrimination, and also providing accommodations for employees with disabilities. So this includes creating uh, a healthy and happy workplace, um, especially if you have an employee who does become pregnant, you have to be accommodating to them. And you cannot just say, okay, time to let you go because you're pregnant. That will create a lot of uh, issues within um, the business so something to take into consideration the same thing with someone with disabilities uh, if you have uh, an employee who's in a wheelchair you may be required to provide uh, some type of uh, ADA compliant ramp or special accommodations so that they're able to uh, effectively uh, and safely work at your workplace Another thing you need to do as an employer is to provide notice to employees of their rights. Okay, so um, you'll see this if you've ever worked. Um, you see this in like restaurants or different offices, all the different notices that are posted. So this is just a variety of different things, everything from minimum wage, employee rights, uh, anti-discrimination laws. So everything that we just spoke about, that you also need to make this apparent to your employees that hey these are your rights and right? so you know everything we just spoke about we can't keep that uh, as a secret but employees need to be educated and notified that hey these are your rights and this is what uh, you can do if you feel like any of your rights are being violated And so another uh, option that's specific to agriculture and a lot of local farms here take advantage of this is the worldwide opportunities on organic farms, otherwise known as woofing. So this links volunteers with organic farms and growers to promote cultural and educational experiences. And so basically you as a farm can get farm labor by providing a uh, living space for uh, basically volunteers to come work on your farm. So instead of paying them wages, you provide them with housing. A lot of times there's also food um, that's provided as well. Um, but this could be a real nice way to um, save money, but also provide opportunities for volunteers from all over the world to come to your farm and stay there and help work on the farm. So with all these things we're talking about, a lot of laws, a lot of taxes, um, there are ways to make this easier for you as a business owner and you can outs outsource these services to uh, different HR companies and here in Hawaii uh, we have a lot of different options 
So we have uh, Town HR Solutions. There's Accenture, uh, Simplicity HR. So this is done by Altris. Um, so a lot of different uh, sources that are available to help that will actually can do the payroll uh, payroll taxes for you. And then they can go ahead and uh, administer the paychecks to your employees. And then they can also make sure that all of your insurances and uh, health insurance is being provided to your employees. And then also work and coach with you um, to ensure that you're not violating any employment laws. And then even if you do run into some problems as an employer, as a business owner, they can help you through that process as well. So this is something that I personally uh, have used. And, and you know, there's so many different things for running a business that you have to think about. So having uh, what I call like a virtual HR department, uh, especially for a small business, is a good business strategy um, to help you with a lot of um, different and challenging um, parts of running a business. All right, so as always, check the course website for any reading and additional assignments. Any questions, you can give me a call or shoot me an email. Aloha.